Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested. At CES 2016, we see a lot of futuristic technologies and what could be more futuristic than tricorders. So not just these prop tricorders from Star Trek Next Generation, but real ones in development. I'm with Grant with the XPRIZE Foundation and you guys have been running a competition to make real tricorders. Can you tell us about that competition? Absolutely. So we actually launched this competition here at CES in 2012. And since then, we've had, you know, initially when we launched, we were over uh, 300 teams around the world that were interested in competing. So today we're left with seven finalists. And so what you see in this glass case here are the prototypes from those seven remaining finalist teams uh, in the Qualcomm Tricorder X Prize. And so these teams represent basically startups and some larger companies from around the world. Let's lay out the parameters of the competition. It's not just about designing a tricorder that does everything it did on the TV show, right. but that's kind of the direction of a multi-purpose medical tool. That's right. So what you see as conceived by Gene Roddenberry back in the 1960s beginning with the Star Trek series, um, was really, this intent was to really bring that science fiction to medical reality. And so what we've challenged these teams to do is actually develop tricorder systems based on the vision of Gene Roddenberry, but more importantly, capable of being used by consumers in their own homes. So that's really towards trying to provide medical access to millions of people around the world who just don't have access to common health care. These are diagnostic tools. Exactly. What are they trying to right. diagnose? Right. So there are basically 12 conditions that these devices must diagnose. You know, things ranging from anemia, COPD, urinary tract infection, otitis media, and as well as to try to maintain and, and measure five vital signs continuously. So the whole intent is for the, all of these systems to be integrated and functional in the sense that consumers can use them. So a big part of this competition is also the consumer experience. So we want the consumer to be engaged and actually benefit from that experience. Now, what are the interfaces? I imagine from these 300 teams and the seven finalists, they all must have different approaches right. to diagnose these conditions and to, to study your, right. your medical signs. Right. So can you call out some of those features? Absolutely. So the one common feature for all of these systems is the fact that they do have an operating system, software, combined with their hardware to actually provide that user interface. So the real in, in the point of interaction with these devices for a consumer would be what you might experience by using an iPhone. So you turn it, you tune it on and immediately the software starts loading and it begins interacting with that consumer and basically goes through a series of questions to capture data points that will enable the system itself to be able to triage and, and to develop a way of De determining what tests to run for that particular individual. So it's intended to be algorithmic based, based on the inputs that you provide. Scanning with a tricorder on the TV show in that fiction is non-invasive, it's flashing right. lights and sounds. Uh, are we there yet? Are these all with using uh, testing using blood? Like, where, what are the, some of the advances that get us toward that non-invasive technology? Well, that's a great question, and it's actually a combination of both of those things. So if you look at some of these devices, you'll notice that this device here from CloudDX actually has a camera built in to actually go inside the ear and actually inspect for otitis media, which is an ear infection. So it's capturing data like basically like photonics would. It would capture an image and compare that image in its database with healthy tissue and if infected tissue. And if you look at um, the other technologies, the common thing too is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So the whole point here is that not only do we want to capture data, but we want to make it accessible by physicians and healthcare providers. So all of these devices must have embedded in them the capability of transmitting this data to the cloud. And so we're working with Amazon Web Services to actually provide the cloud infrastructure to capture and store this data so that we can actually monitor it in real time. It's not just those diagnostic tools that we've seen in doctor's offices for decades or if not hundreds of years. It's really moving toward the future of the vision of Gene Roddenberry. What's the next step for the Tricorder X Prize competition? So the next step, so the teams are really aggressively re-engineering their devices right now. So over the course of the next several months, up until July of 2016, they're basically going to go through another a number of tests and retests and re-engineering re, uh, kind of re phases. Once they complete that, we're actually going to be taking each, um, a number of these devices from each of the teams and actually testing them in a small scale at UC San Diego, the medical center, 
And if they are successful in passing the criteria at that phase, then we're going to be going into a much wider or broader consumer testing process from September through February of 2017. That's where we're going to actually test, we'll run about 39 consumer testing sessions per team because we have 13 conditions and we're going to run three tests per condition per team. So we're actually going to be recruiting people with each of those 12 conditions so that the, the, the uh, consumer with the condition will receive a tricorder. Tricorder then has to detect the presence of that condition, and that's how we'll know how successful they really will be in this competition. Sounds rigorous, and of course it's going to need to be for these to actually be practical and useful in the future before the 24th century at least. So hopefully we'll see these in one of our homes, maybe not exactly like this one, but maybe one of the other ones in the future. Thank you so much, Grant, you. for pleasure. sharing with us Thank this you. project. Thanks. Thank you.